Welcome back to the Visual Bucket 4.7 tutorial. Yay! This is now episode 3, and in episode 3, we're going to talk about GUIs and how to make and listen to GUIs and how to really get your players to interact with the plugin and just the most efficient way to handle big amounts of project space. All right, let's get right into it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about GUIs. So first we need to create a GUI. So what a GUI is, when you open up a chest, that's a GUI, or you open up your inventory, that's a GUI, or the beacon, whatever. They're all types of GUIs. What we're gonna do is we're just going to pretty much say, hey, when we type slash games, a bunch of different games are gonna come up in a GUI that your players are able to toggle between. For the GUI ID, I just always put the GUI ID and the title as the same, just so I don't confuse myself. So we're gonna call it the GUI games and the title games. And we're gonna make the size 27 because chests are three by nine. Okay, so then after you finish this, the way that you actually set the slots is you use inventory set item. And I've already pinned it to my to my pins because they're awesome. Inventory set item. So then when you go through here, inventory, what inventory? It's the inventory of the GUI inventory that we're creating. Index is the slot number that we're trying to use. So let's just put it in slot number one. GUI start on zero. So it's actually zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the next row is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And then the last row is 18 through 26 so it's one thing whenever you're setting up your GUIs you gotta you gotta know that it doesn't start on one it starts on zero so this is not gonna be in the first spot this is gonna be in the second spot so then for the item we're gonna do a new named item with we're gonna put a sword so a diamond sword for the material and the name of it we're just gonna say well we'll just say coming soon just so that we're not actually like making anything all right so then now we have created a GUI so now we need a way to call to the GUI so we're gonna come back into plugins the plugin components and we're going to make a command so when someone says hey when i type in slash games i want you to open gui gui named games not j games games to player command sender so then let's go test that out just to make sure that when we type slash games it opens up the gui id of games Let's go build it. All right, so now that we're back in our Minecraft world, we're gonna do slash reload, confirm, reload complete, and then we're gonna go slash games, click on it, and now we get games coming soon. Perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. So now we need to make it so that when they click on this, something happens. Let's go back into Visual Bucket. Okay, so now that we're back in Visual Bucket, we're gonna go to Add. Instead of Create a GUI, we're going to do a GUI Click Handler. So then the GUI ID is the same GUI that we made. So we're, the GUI ID is Games. And so then we're gonna need an if statement. So we're gonna say, equals so now that we have equals the first object is going to be slot clicked the clicked slot of the gui is equal to the number let's just put a number in here the number one slot is the one that we put so if they click on number one we just want it to broadcast the message hey you clicked first slot all right let's build it so now that we've reloaded the world we're going to go back to slash games and so when we click on this slot, we should get you clicked the first slot down here, which is awesome. And every time you click it, it says you clicked the first slot. So this is number one. Like I was saying earlier, this actually starts with zero and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Yes. So now what we do is I'm going to teach y'all how I do a toggleable twists after I turn Minecraft noises down. So one thing that I do is I usually do vanilla Minecraft that has just, oh, excuse me, that has just twists on vanilla Minecraft, but you don't just want the twist running all the time. And so I think it's cool to have them be toggleable. So you can say, when I click this, it turns, you know, sheep drop OP items, or, you know, you toggle the fact that when you step on obsidian, you die instantly. So I think having toggleable things is awesome for an end user experience. So that way anyone can come in and play on the server and be able to have toggleable switches on all the different game modes that they want to be playing. So I'm gonna show y'all how I do that. Here's the way that I do that. For games, instead of having it just do nothing, we want it to be able to toggle back and forth this block break that we did in the previous episode. For just this first games for the coming soon, you know, we can actually go and change that. So instead of coming soon, we're going to change this guy. We're gonna cut and change it to stone stone stony stony stone 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 and instead of stone we're going to say speedy 
stone. So now it's going to say speedy stone in that slot. So it's still in the, it's still in the first slot, but now we want to say, bring in a new if statement and we're going to start changing a toggle for this block break event for this stone block break event. So first thing we need to do is we need equals. And so we're going to use variables that are built into Visual Bucket and into Minecraft just to be able to store values to call back to them later. So we're going to say variable if a global variable, the difference between a global and a local variable is a, a global variable is applied to everyone in the game, whereas a local variable is just applied to you. For things like block break, we want everyone to be able to do it and not just a singular person. So we're going to say variable, global variable of, we're going to call it speedy stone. If speedy stone is equal to the number, is equal to number one, meaning that it's on. Here, we'll first, we'll first start with it off. So if they click on this slot and it says speedy stone is off, we want to go over to the block selector and we want to set variable, um, a variable, set a global variable, the global variable, is called speedy stone. We want to set it to value of one. So now it is on. So whenever you click the button, it ran through and said, hey, I did click the first slot. It's going to ask, hey, is speedy stone off? And if it's off, it's gonna turn it on. So then we're gonna make the exact same one again. So we're actually just gonna copy and paste after Pause real quick. I am in the middle of editing this video and I think that the moving around of all of the all of the frames looks good to me because that's how I like to learn. I like to see things move because I'm a kinesthetic learner. And so I enjoy it, but I was just talking to a buddy of mine and he said that it would look bad and that, that it was so hard to concentrate. So I'm just gonna leave the rest of this video the way that it is. And you guys just let me know, hey, I think that learning with moving pictures is better or versus I think learning without it helps me so let me know what you think all right now let's get back to the video we're gonna move that inside so now so now we're just gonna change the change the names and then look i'm back so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and put another if statement in here we're gonna make this statement equals just like like always we usually use equals just because it's a lot easier to use equal we're gonna go variable the global variable of speedy stone is set to object number one so when this is set to one we want to take all of the stuff that we already wrote and stick it inside of there so now on, this will only happen when speedy stone is set to one which is on and we need to do one more thing which is go down here into plugin components and we're gonna go plugin enable. So now we just built a plugin enable. So whenever the plugin actually starts, we want to first set the global variable of speedy stone to equal zero because you don't want it on when you come in, but the code needs to know, hey, I need to start with zero so that speedy stone is not set to a null value. Let's build it and just see if this works. Okay, so I think I know what we're going to do instead. So I don't think you can have two GUI click handlers that are for the same GUI or else it, it won't read one, it only reads the other. So we're just going to have one. And so we have this if statement here. We're going to use an else statement after this. So if speedy stone is equal to one, then we want it to do this. If it's not, then we want to just do the opposite. So set variable, global variable, a variable speedy stone to number zero as well as broadcast the message speedy stone off all right let's go try this one all right let's try it slash reload confirm then we're gonna go slash games we're gonna turn on turn off speedy stone and it just turns it off a bunch of times now okay i'll be back oh haha uh -huh. i never changed this all right here we go Slash games, we turn on speedy stone, turn off speedy stone. So speedy stone is off right now. So I should be able to come over here and I do not get speed. But then whenever I go slash games and I turn speedy stone on, I get speed two for three seconds. That's awesome. Good job team. 
did great. And this stuff is for everyone who is playing. Let's go back slash games one more time and turn it off. It is now off. So now when we break stone, we do not get speed two. That's great, all right, let's go do another one. Okay, so we just made speedy stone. So instead of speedy stone, let's do the egg one. We're gonna call it golden egg. So we want to be able to toggle golden egg on and off. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna do this part first. We're gonna go equals the global variable, golden egg, golden egg. Do number, if it's on one, we want to be able to run all of this. But then if it's off, we don't want anything to happen. So now we'll go back into the click handler and we'll do it again. So now we need to go into the create GUI and now we need to make another golden egg. Copy all of this, paste after. Instead of in slot one, we want this to be in slot three. Here, how about this? We're going to make this slot 10 so that it's in the middle and then we're gonna make this slot 12. So now we're in the middle of this stuff and it looks a lot better. So this is gonna be golden egg and for our material we're just going to use an egg there you are regular egg and everything else should already be built so let's build it and see if this works too let's toggle golden egg and golden egg did not toggle in chat all we saw was that a glow squid died all right let's go fix that oh you know sometimes you know i wish that i would just think because i needed to copy all of this and not just this down here. So I'm gonna copy this into my clipboard real quick. And we're going to delete this and delete this. Copy all of the if statement paste after. This needs to be on click in slot 12 and this needs to be slot 10. Now we can do all of our stuff and it should work better. We also need to come in here into the plugin enabled and we need to set this variable to zero before we start. All right. This time it should work. Okay, so let's once again <laughs> reload it. Do, 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 Slash games, golden egg. Golden egg is now on. Golden egg is now off. So let's test out that. So golden egg is off right now. When we come over, let's come over here so we can actually like see it. When we throw an egg, nothing happens. Awesome. Look, now we can hear ourselves think. Awesome. Egg is not golden. When we go to slash games, we turn on golden egg, golden egg on, and we throw it at stuff. It turns into gold. That's awesome. You guys are great. I'm so glad we did that. We did that. Yes, look at that. And our chat's going crazy because that was the last plugin that we made. I think we forgot to put the stop the broadcast entity death. But look, so now we can change, we can toggle all of the things that we wanted to. So come in here, golden egg is now off. Speedy stone is off. And now, well, speedy stone was on and now it's off. And it's just real useful and, and awesome because now you can see, hey, this is when I'm changing stuff. And so now eggs don't do anything and breaking stone doesn't do anything. All right, so let's go back into visual bucket and just recap and explain a couple more things before we finish. So now that we're back in visual bucket, I just wanted to explain that this is the way that I build plugins and the way that I use visual bucket. It may not be the most efficient, but it's the most efficient for me. So being able to look up here and say, oh, this block break event is my speedy stone and this projectile hit is my golden egg and being able to toggle it through the click handler is just real simple and easy for me to understand but i want everyone to know you can come up with your own way to do all of this stuff if you really wanted to i had to teach myself how to do all of this so if someone comes out and comments hey there's an easier way to do it there probably is this is just how I do it, and this is the most efficient way for me to do it right now. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can, oh, wow. You can email me. My email is usually down in the description, but just get a hold of me through DM or whatever. Thank you for watching. Um, shameless self-promotion time because it's the end of the video. Please like and subscribe because this helps me know that, hey, you guys want to see this stuff, and I'm still working on creating bigger, better, awesome servers 
for other people to be able to mess around on and hang out with me. So working on Twitch and all of that stuff too. So stay up to date. Hit the hit the bell icon. Help me help me out just a just a little bit, please, and thank you. If you have any questions, just let me know. All right, thank you. Bye.